I just love Bernie Sanders' voice. I heard it echoing down the block when he held a fundraising event in Maple Bluff the other day about a block from Scott Walker's mansion, and it was such a beautiful thing to hear that strong, smart, tough, brilliant voice for regular people. And it's wonderful to hear him grilling the apologists for Wall Street in Washington, the Alan Greenspans and the Larry Summerses who have to run into the fan blades of Bernie's intellect. It's just a beautiful thing, and we're so lucky to have that. So it's now my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who is a national radio commentator, writer, and author of the book, Swim Against the Current, Even a Dead Fish Can Go with the Flow. Jim Hightower has spent four decades battling what he calls the powers that be on behalf of the powers that ought to be. Consumers, working families, environmentalists, small businesses, and just plain folks. Twice elected Texas Agriculture Commissioner, Hightower is a leading progressive populist of our day. You know him through his daily radio commentaries, his monthly newsletter, The Hightower Lowdown, and his column in the Progressive Magazine. Molly Ivan said, if Will Rogers and Mother Jones had a baby, Jim Hightower would be that rambunctious child. <laughs> so give it up for Jim Hightower. Hello, Bob Festers. Just a blue perfect joy for me to be back with you, Garvey Eastas. Uh, you wild-ass Scott Walker butt-kickers <laughs> for another Baba Palooza and a full day of edification at the hands of our man Ed Garvey here, putting on the best political party in America right here in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> and, and how appropriate that the theme of this year's hell-raising hoorah is recovering our democracy. Not a moment too soon, huh? Your little petty potentate of a governor is arresting, cuffing, and bullying grandmothers and journalists and teenagers for daring to show up at his capital to criticize his policies without a permit from his government. <laughs> I, yeah, I, when I, I heard about Walker doing this, I, I thought of Tom DeLay uh, when he was indicted down in Austin and then convicted several months ago, I saw a guy on TV, a Republican, saying, well, sometimes Tom is his own worst enemy. And I thought, not while I'm alive, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that is the attitude we have to take. Well, the spirit of Bob Fest is full of that attitude. I think of an old cowboy saying out of uh, West Texas, they say, speak the truth, but ride a fast horse. Uh, <laughs> we need your feisty spirit, your hard facts and hard truths, your democratic principles and citizen action more than ever before because there are powerful forces of plutocracy, autocracy, theocracy, and kleptocracy loose on our land, out to change America itself, change the very idea of America as a unique society trying to reach toward egalitarianism and the common good. You know, Benjamin Franklin, at the start, wrote that the destiny of America is not power, but light. Light. And the light he meant was the light of those values of economic fairness, social justice, equal opportunity for all people. That's the light of America, yet our political... Yes. Yet the political, media, and corporate powers that be, excuse the redundancy there, <laughs> won't even talk about those core values, much less attempt to implement any of them. I think our problem is uh, we got too many five-watt bulbs sitting in 100-watt sockets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and as a result, we have a darkness descending on our land. Bill Moyer said it. He said that the delusional is no longer marginal. It has come in from the fringe to sit in the very seat of power. We've got Tea Party Republicans in Washington trying to rule by hissy fit. 
voters last year soundly rejected them, especially women, Latinos, young people, African Americans, labor, GLBT. Yet, right after the election, John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, the orange man, <laughs> said that now Obama needed to compromise with the House because the House had won a mandate. <laughs> you know, the more Boehner talks, the more you have to wonder, is he naturally stupid or does he have to practice that every morning? <laughs> Yet Boehner is not the most bizarro of them. There's a guy named Representative Ted Yoho. That's his name. Over here in Pennsylvania, this Yahoo says that there is a racist tax hidden in Obamacare. And the tax is, he says, a 10% tax on tanning salons. <laughs> it discriminates against white people, he said. <laughs> we have to pay the tax and they don't. <laughs> and if you think it can't get more bizarre than that, never bet against Texas when it comes to Yahoo. <laughs> We've got a guy named Steve Stockman, a member of Congress a member of Congress of the United States of America. He's got a bumper sticker for re-election. Says, if babies had guns, they would not be aborted. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is the crowd of clowns that promised in 2010 to take America back, and they have, back to the dark ages, pretty much. Let's review this plutocracy, theocracy, autocracy, and kleptocracy, starting with plutocracy. In 30 years' time, we have moved from Ronald Reagan's trickle-down economics to the Koch brothers' tinkle-down economics. <laughs> Inequality is now widening at warp speed. Consider just one family, one little extended family of six households, Christy, Jim, Alice, Robbie, Anne, and Nancy, their little family enterprise has produced a good-sized nest egg for them, $103 billion. Six individuals, $103 billion. They are the Waltons, the heirs of the Walmart fortune. These six people possess more wealth than the bottom 40% of all American households. The Walmart six have a stash of riches greater than that owned by 127 million America. Six people have more wealth than 127 million of our fellow citizens. Yet that gap is growing steadily wider, while the wealth of the typical family is down by nearly 40 percent since 2009. The wealth of the six Waltons is up by 22 percent. Without them having to lift a finger, they did nothing. Net worth has nothing to do with worthiness. You know, sometimes you, I mean, you got to say, these people are getting so rich they could afford to air condition hell, and I tell you what, they better be setting some money aside for that project, I think. But <laughs> Which brings us, of course, to theocracy. Welcome to Texas and the nationwide war on women. Our governor, Rick Oops Perry, <laughs> along with an unholy host of far-right male-led, Bible-thumping, anti-choice legislative zealots were in a macho heat back in June to use state government power, government power, to slap the women of our state, wanted to kill Planned Parenthood, shut the door to women's health services, outlaw any abortion after 20 weeks, even in the case of rape. And they were ramming that through in a special session, but they had not anticipated the power of Wendy. State Senator Wendy Davis out of Fort Worth. Who took a stand. On June 25th, conducted an 11 hour filibuster. A filibuster in Texas is not a stroll in the park. It's not like one of those Mitch McConnell things where you say, I'm gonna have a filibuster, okay, we cave in. Rather, you have to actually talk for the full time. Uh, you have to be on topic. Uh, you cannot even lean on your desk. 
Uh, you cannot sit down. You can take no break to pee or anything like that. It is a, a grueling exercise. But she did it for 11 hours, but she did not do it alone because the word went out on the internet and on Twitter and et cetera and on the media that Wendy was taking a stand. And from all over the state, 1,500 women came, some of them driving more than 200 miles to get there. And they, they filled the gallery. They flowed down the hallways and the stairways. They filled the rotunda. And when the lieutenant governor finally, at the last minute, cut her off, they erupted. It was so noisy that senators could not hear themselves speak. The, the clock ticked steadily toward midnight when the session would end, and the Republicans panicked. They, they couldn't get it together, though, and the bill died as midnight passed. And what a hoot it was then to hear Perry and the lieutenant governor and some of these other lawmakers just tremble in the face of these women. Mob rule, said Perry. <laughs> International socialists, claimed the lieutenant governor. Occupy Wall Street tactics, they snarled. Terrorists took over the state senate, said one lawmaker. But what happened was that the political pricks and power ties shriveled when the ladies talked back. That's the power of ordinary people. It's not just this theocracy, not just taking place in Texas, unfortunately. State after state, you see right wing trying to take America back to Father's knows best in the 1950s. My lowdown last uh, issue, we wrote about some of the other states are doing won't tax your patients with many of them, but Alabama, for example, they go further than even 20 weeks without, uh, beyond which you cannot have an abortion. Uh, Alabama proposes uh, that uh, the moment an egg is fertilized, a baby exists. That makes, that gives sperm the protection of personhood. See, that's their goal. Save the sperm, people. Save the sperm. That's what we're talking about. If you think it can't get wackier than that, go to Arizona. They say that a baby exists the first day after a woman's last menstrual period prior to getting pregnant. A baby exists two weeks prior to conception. <laughs> Miraculous indeed, don't you think? Well, next let's take a look at the rise of autocracy. We can talk as we've been doing today about permanent war, Iraq, we've achieved so much there, right? Afghanistan, trillions of dollars, and dead people and mangled lives, lost opportunities. Now, on to Syria, because Lockheed has investors to feed. On to Syria and beyond. We could talk about that or we could talk about the militarization of our police forces in this country. Use of drones, police with drones, tanks, riot gear, SWAT teams, the mentality of force first. But I think we progressives have a special duty to talk about something else. We need to face up to and face down something far more reaching, uh, more far reaching even than those. And that is our president's cavalier creation of an all seeking, all grasping surveillance state of spies and lies in the United States of America. This is the evil spawn of the 2001 Patriot Act, of course. And thank you, Russ Feingold, for being the one senator who voted against that. And yes, this began under George W., who famously said, fool me once, Shame on, shame on you. <laughs> Fool me, you can't get fooled again. 
I miss him. <laughs> but it is Barack Obama who has been the one to turn the National Security Agency into the super lux vacuum cleaner of every American's First and Fourth Amendment constitutional rights and then lied about it. Last month, Obama said NSA is not listening in to your phone calls. It turns out to be a lie. He said NSA is not reading people's emails. That turns out to be a lie. They are. He said members of Congress are fully briefed. That's a lie. They're not. He said there's a secret court that protects your privacy. That's a lie. They're not. I mean, let's be frank, or Ed, or <laughs> whoever. If Bush and Cheney were the ones doing that, we would be in high howl over what's going on. And to me, it is worse that Obama is the one behind it. We can't give him a pass on this. We have got to stand up for people's constitutional rights. He is a constitutional law professor, for God's sake. He knows that this is wrong, yet he's weaker than Canadian hot sauce when it comes to standing up <laughs> for our core rights. And whether you call Edward Snowden a traitor or a hero is really irrelevant. What's relevant is that without his revelations, we still would not know what our government is doing. We still wouldn't know it. That's the wrong part. And Obama is now saying, well, we just, we, we're going to impose some additional restrictions on this. Bovine excrement, as they say out in Lubbock. <laughs> restrictions won't do. We have got to repeal it. We've got to reject it. We've got to stop this spying, this spy movement on our people. And now comes kleptocracy and all-out corporate assault on your and my rights and the ability to be a self-governing people, the very essence of America's existence. First, of course, we've got the assault that we're all too familiar with of Citizens United, the outright corporate purchase of our politics, which means the purchase of our government, which is the purchase of our public policies. We've gone from 1972 with Richard Nixon and creep. Remember creep? We've gone from creep to creepy now. 2012, back in force, we've got dark money, corporate shell games, super PAC plutocrats. But more important, I think, let me tell you about something else that's coming our way, and that is a corporate coup that is taking place. That's how Lori Wallach at the Global Trade Exchange explains it. It is something called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This is a sneak attack, very little media coverage of this. This is an all-out sneak attack on our sovereignty. Uh, it is a supersized, nuclearized NAFTA that both George W. and Obama have been secretly negotiating since 2008, negotiating with 11 Pacific Rim nations from Mexico to Vietnam, Canada to Brunei. It is an astonishing piece of work. It masquerades as a trade proposal, but it has 29 chapters in this huge document, only five of which deal with trade. The rest of them deal with enthroning corporate power over ordinary citizens. For example, you might have a program here in Madison of Buy Wisconsin with your local government, uh, or, or, or Buy Madison even. You might have a, a Buy Sweatshop free uh, you, you, you would put your public money where your values are. That would be outlawed by the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, food safety. Uh, any, any of our government's food safety uh, regulations on pesticide levels, GMOs, uh, etc., uh, that are stricter than the international standard, as most of ours are, would be eliminated, would be reduced to the international standard. Uh, our, our Department of Energy would no longer have the power to regulate fracking of gas that is going to be exported to those nations. So it would result in a huge boom in increased fracking because they will not have to uh, explain the environmental and economic impacts on local communities. 
the banksters. Uh, this Trans-Pacific Partnership would explicitly prohibit such provisions as the Robin Hood tax that we propose here in the United States, a trans, uh, tax on the transactions of speculators around the globe to finance the kind of things that we want done, that Bernie Sanders talked about, about America becoming a great nation. Where's the money? Where are we going to get the money? They said, we're going to get it from where it went. We're going to get it from Wall Street and these speculators that have hauled it all off. Well, this transnational partnership takes our sovereignty away and says we can't do that. We need to pay attention to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So go to the website of the uh, Public Citizens of Global Trade Watch. That is at tradewatch.org and sign up. They've got all kinds of local actions all across the country. We have a very good chance of defeating this, but we have got to do the work that it takes to defeat it. Now let me tell you something astonishing. Despite all of this bad news, we're winning. We are winning in fight after fight, thanks to the phenomenal efforts of grassroots folks like you. On issue after issue, we're winning. Very little media coverage, but Citizen United, for example, did you know that there are 13 states that have already passed resolution calling on Congress to send a constitutional amendment to the people to vote on, to outlaw? corporate money and politics. More than 300 cities have done that. 89% of Democrats, 85% of independents, and 78% of Republicans support getting corporate money out of politics. We're winning. That Trans-Pacific Partnership, you know, the, the, the more people know about it, uh, the, the less their chances are. You know, Linda Johnson once said, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken manure. He was a little more graphic than that, but. <laughs> and that's all they've got. And we've got a very broad coalition that the Public Citizen Global Trade Watch has helped to form and, and coordinate to defeat it. And, some, and the, the media establishment said, oh, well, you, you can't defeat one of these things. The, the people can't understand. It's too complex for the people to understand. Well, bullshit. <laughs> it, this is a straight out power grab by multinational corporations. It's not hard to understand it at all. And people do get it, but we have to go to the people with that. And since 1998, we have defeated 10 of these kind of trade scams in the Congress of the United States. We can do it again. Uh, on on environmental battles, uh, Nebraska, Folks organized out there, farmers with, uh, with uh, environmentalists teamed up out there, and they moved the Keystone XL pipeline off of the Ogallala Aquifer uh, there. Uh, there's, uh, there have been two spills out of, of this tar sands oil already in the United States. Devastating. One in Michigan, one down in Arkansas. Just devastating. Still can't get it cleaned up. Uh, and, and the people are rallying. The, the more this information gets out, then people oppose that. We got a battle in Texas, a woman named Julia Trigg Crawford. She's a farmer up in northeast Texas. Uh, and the Keystone Pipeline outfit was able to use the state's power of eminent domain to force that pipeline across her land and across the creek that waters, that uh, irrigates her crops uh, down there. Uh, but they picked on the wrong woman. Julia is six foot tall, former basketball player at Texas A&M, and, and a third generation farmer. And they got the pipeline across her land, but she has now organized a statewide campaign of environmentalists, of farmers, of all kinds of just regular workaday people, Republican as well as Democrat, to say we've got to take the power of eminent domain back uh, into the public domain, not allow foreign corporations to use it to run over us. Uh, so. The same thing with fracking. Uh, the reason they're not going to win on fracking is because of the water. We don't have the water to do the fracking. They're also not going to win because the earthquakes tend to be caused exactly by fracking. Even on that theocracy, the pushback is taking place. One of your own state senators says, uh, when the Republicans who favors more uh, punishment of, of women, uh, said that he has felt the pulse of the people and uh, senses a rising political reality. All we're going to do is panic people, and this is going to blow up if we don't begin to moderate some of this stuff. Well, even they 
are getting uh, the message uh, there. So we can fight back. And uh, the uh, GLBT fights uh, in, as you know, all across the country, the gay marriage thing is now happening. I was in New Mexico just uh, two weeks ago, and it happened the day I was there that uh, a uh, county commissioner said there's nothing, I've read the, the Constitution of the state of New Mexico, and there's nothing in there that prohibits uh, same-sex marriage. So we, I, I will start issuing licenses today. Uh, and they're now doing it all across in that state. So. All right, a friend of mine put it to me like this. He said, those who say it can't be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. <laughs> and that would be you. We're the ones to make the difference here. You're the ones who are doing it. So I'm here simply to say keep on keeping on uh, and to say keep on keeping on more. Do a little bit more uh, because the people are with us, as Bernie was indicating, on issue after issue. And we have those values, too. You know, I, I grew up, I was, I was a small guy growing up in a small Texas town. Uh, and I learned early on, you should never hit a man with glasses. You should use something much heavier. <laughs> uh, and, and the heaviest thing that we have is that set of values, fairness, justice, opportunity for all people. We believe in that in this country. And that's the way we need to couch all of these issues in terms of our values in terms of the stories that we have to tell. So keep reaching out with Bob Fess's core progressive message, uh, with its spirit uh, and with its mission. And as Patti Smith put it in that great rockin' song, people have the power, the power to dream, to rule, to wrestle the world from fools. Thank you for what you're doing to get that done. Glad to be with you. Jim Hightower, we love him.